welcome to you. I'm Hayley Palmer. It's so good to have you here with me on tonight's show, especially as we are joined by broadcaster Mike Reed. And here is what happened when I caught up with him. Mike Reed, the one and only. How are you? I'm very well since I last saw you. Yeah. I was going to say, when was it that I last saw you? Well, it was a couple of years ago. We did the TV series, wasn't Back it? Back in the day. And Good was, days. Yeah. And what I love most about you, Mike, is we have the same love for food. We're always thinking about food, aren't we? You see, I thought you were going to say, what I love about you is everything. <laughs> well, that and as you well. you said food. <laughs> No, but we're always talking about what we're going to have for lunch, what we're going to have for snack. And as soon as you got here, you just ordered some croissants. And I was like, I've missed that. Yeah, but you did eat one. Come on. <laughs> they yeah. were warm croissants. How good I refuse? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's great to have you here. What have you been up to? Uh, well, I guess it's a long time since I've seen oh, you God. last. But in a nutshell. Oh, so many things. Just been doing a film, a uh, World War One film that I've been in. Um, various people in that, so like a two and a half million pound Hollywood movie. I've got a song in there, which is great. Um, we've been, uh, oh, I've been writing a new musical. We've got, I think we meant to have great expectations going out again this year, because uh, mm. everything was held up obviously for two years. Mm. And then I've just written a new musical pretty quickly. So we're going to do a workshop of that in the summer, and then hopefully tour that. Um, that's been uh, really good to do. I've got three books I meant to hand. I've just handed uh, one in, which is my series of A Thousand Years of London Street. Um, Denmark Street is out there. A Thousand Years of Cheapside, I've just handed in. That was 100,000 words. So I'm just finally sort of proofing that at the moment. Um, done a great cover for it. And I've nearly finished the third one, which is A Thousand Years of Piccadilly, which doesn't really go back a thousand years. It, it sort of, you know, the, the, the first two or three hundred years, I've had to cheat a bit by saying, oh, there's a trackway heading out of town who knows who went down this trackway you know and then list a few a few uh, tribes of people uh but yeah i mean it's uh, it's been great fun because you're opening a door to the past mm. walking through it and going back through the centuries which is fantastic we love that well it sounds like you've been very busy we're going to talk to you more after tears for fears which is number one in the heritage chart as we speak uh yeah it's been, it's been number one in the heritage chart no small thing uh, really back with a bang. Their first album for, what, 17 years, I think. Incredible. Here we go. Check it out. I'll be speaking to the brilliant Mike Weed on the other side of this. Get your sweets from the candy man. Mike, tell us all about uh, The Footage Detectives. This is a new TV series. Uh, we want to know all about this. Yeah, I've done a few things with Talking Pictures in the past where we uh, discussed doing something, and then they came up with this, and I thought, well, what's that? I don't quite get that. Noel, the founder, uh, myself, and I thought, mm, OK, uh, it's worked a treat. They were absolutely right. And uh, I, I had no idea what it was going to be. And we find these old, you know, it, it, Noel goes around the country finding old cans with stuff in. And we look at it and go, now, where's that? Is that so and so? And people love it. It's like rummaging through somebody's photo library, you know, their video library. And you're going, that, that, that's Blackpool. It's Blackpool. Yeah, when is it? Was it 54? Oh, no more like early 60s, I think. And then people are going to say, I spotted the bus and it was made in 1929 in Morecambe. And these are brilliant. I mean, absolutely great. And then we find old bits of footage from TV series uh, that have been lost and things like that. Mm. And we have a lot of sons and daughters of. We had Googie Withers' daughter in the other day, uh, Frank Muir's son, uh, Dick Emery's son, everybody, uh, Sam Kidd's son, Jonathan. So, yeah. Um, people come in and they bring home movies for their parents and what have you. And you see all the stars in their, in their garden and things like that. So uh, it's been a real joy to do. It's been terrific fun. I mean, I, yeah. you know, it's great for me because normally I do programmes on, you know, on music or something mm. along those lines. Yeah, it's totally different for you. So to do a, a, um, a series which has been very, very successful uh, on old film is great. But it's, it is like being a detective and I always quite fancied that. I was writing books as often as like being a literary detective. You're out on the road and you're looking for somewhere and you're trying to deduce where that house might have been or who might have lived there. So, yeah, I like I the detective side of it. I think you'd make a good detective, it. actually, Mike. Yes. I'd quite like to have done that. Yeah, but a bit of the Sherlock Holmes in me, I think. That'd be quite good, yeah. It's never too late. Hmm? Never too late. No, and it's not. I just get a magnifying glass, a deer stalker and a bloodhound. I'll be away. <laughs> We're going to go into the next song, uh, My Favourite Waste of Time, Owen Paul. Ah, uh, yes, Owen Paul, the former Celtic footballer. Here he is. I can see you all from here. I can 
can hear you all from here from where I stand it seems so strong and in my hand this won't take long try to find questions that I didn't think you'd been asked before because yeah. I know you've been asked everything. Are you excited? Yeah, uh, yeah I never like to know the questions. Some He's people do like to know up they front do. what they're being asked. So what are you going to ask me? When I interview people, they say, what are you going to ask me? I have no idea what I'm going to ask you. I make it up as I go along. Uh, and the same the other way around. I prefer not to know because I think the answers are more spontaneous. OK, well, I've prepped these on the train journey here. So... Are they about railways? Good. No, they're not about railways. You're going to love it. OK, about so food. quick fire. Some I bet there's a food food. one. Of I course there's a food one. I okay. knew there would be. See, I'm a good detective. <laughs> yeah, see, he's good. All right, here we go. Mike Reed, quick fire question round. I'm going to catch him out. Here we go. Uh, driving song. Driving song? Oh. Uh, I don't have songs. I listen to audio books mainly in the car. OK, we'll take so that. So I have a driving audio, yeah. I mean, it's Mike Reed. Of course he does. Yeah. Uh, best Fish and chip shop in England. I wouldn't know that. Harry Ramsden is always meant to be good, but um, I think as long as it's by the seaside, it's good. It's good. I think it's the location. The, you're right, actually, by the seaside. They yeah, taste the location different, don't rather they? than the batter thickness. <laughs> One piece of advice uh, that you wish you could tell your younger self. Oh, yeah. I, I always mean to come up with something clever for this. Uh, and I've heard people give really clever answers. And I'm not sure that I have one. Um, I give my younger self. I don't know because I stayed in shorts, so uh, I normally <laughs> wear shorts. shorts. So that was a bit of advice. Where's your stuff. shorts today, Mike? Uh, I put my longs on. <laughs> it was TV, isn't it? It is. I mean, come on. Um, I don't know. Probably so much advice. Um, not grow up. I think it's probably the answer. Yeah. Yeah. Like it. That uh, worked. Next one. Describe yourself in one sentence. <laughs> describe myself in one sentence. I don't know. Um, it's difficult, isn't it? For a, it's easy. Could, could you describe me in one sentence? That's probably easier for somebody else to describe somebody in one sentence than you. Uh, Mike, I would say super intelligent, food loving, fun loving Mike. Could have written it myself. Oh, my There we goodness. go. There we go. <laughs> uh, the craziest thing that happened to you at school? The craziest thing? Um, I, don't, I think probably. I used to play keepy uppy at football, and I'd be practicing on my knee and on my foot, stuff like that. And um, and the ball came out to me on the football pitch in a match one day, and I started doing these tricks with it. 
and one of our masters bellowed across the field who was refereeing. He said, get rid of it, Twinkle Toes. And he stuck. <laughs> he went from Twinkle Toes to Twinkle to Twink. And even now, somebody will say, oh, hi, Twink. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> that was... Things just stick like that, yeah. don't they? Yeah, they do. They do. It's like in, in, in the book Jennings and Derbyshire, uh, a series by Anthony Buckridge. You can see how schoolboy convoluted nicknames go. There was a guy that called, uh, he, they called him Bod. That was his nickname, <laughs> Bod. And his initials were C.A. Templeton. Or C.A. Templeton, yeah, C.A. Templeton. So it was C.A.T. So, of course, C.A.T. So schoolboys being perverse called him Dog. And then they called him Dog's Body for short, perverse again. And then Bod, short for dog's body. So he went from being cat, C.A. Templeton, to Bod. And that's how schoolboy nicknames work. Like it. All right, then, Swing. Moving on. Uh, if you could only eat one meal for the rest of your life, you need to be a food question, what would it be? Give me it, the right answer here, Mike. Don't let me down. It could be chili con carne uh, or it could be chicken paella. Good choices. And uh, what is your favourite quote? My favourite quote? Mm -hmm. Oh, there are so many. I mean, there are so many. I mean, Oscar Wilde could dish up like a hundred of them. Uh, but I've always quite liked the one that John Lennon claimed, but I'm not quite sure was his, uh, which is life is what happens to you while you're busy making other plans. Good one. And favourite accent. He's got the best accent. Favourite accent? Yeah. Do I have a favourite accent? You're so good at accents, Mike. Yeah, but do I have a favourite one? I don't know. Australian? Um, uh, well, yeah, when I, you know, when I went down there, they said, when I was in the jungle, when I came out, they said, will you come and do some programs on, uh, you know, the Gold Coast Radio? And I got in there. These guys are talking like, I felt like Pinky and Perky, and these guys are talking down there. So I really had to put on a seriously deep voice and slow myself down a bit, yeah. Irish? Hmm? Irish? Irish? Yeah. Well, yeah, and this, this Northern Irish, of course, the, the Ian Paisley accent like that. When I first went over there, the guy's talking to me in the car and it's like a tune and I couldn't, I couldn't work out what he's saying. So I'm just saying, yes, hmm, yes. You know, and then you go over the border and they're far more gentle like that. They're your best friend and they buy you a drink and talk to you all night. One more Welsh. Oh, that's the right. You need a mouthful of respect to the Welsh, you know? The trouble is with Welsh people start going into Indian. Uh, no, you, you need a mouthful of respect to and say, Hlandrin Dodwells and, and uh, Hlan Gothland, Hlandred, no place like that, yeah. We could do a whole show on Mike Weed and accents, couldn't we? Yeah, and of course, the, 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 uh, the North East ones are always tricky, but what they do is they drop the G's off the ends of the worlds, uh, all singing, all dancing, and go up at the end of the line. <laughs> Mike, I honestly don't know what to say apart from thank you for giving us the best entertainment here on the show uh, this evening. We're going to have to get all our guests now to do accents, I think. Just brilliant. <laughs> uh, we're going to go into uh, the undertones. Thrill me. Yeah, it's this is one. great. Um, yeah. This is a really exciting record. They were, they were John Peel's favourite band, The Undertones, and I did a lot of tours in Northern Ireland. And when they were just starting, uh, they, I was down in the Casbah one night, and I'd get up and play with some of the bands. And they'd made this, The Undertones made this homemade badge with cling film over it. They put the letters on themselves and gave it to me, and I had it for years. And John Peel was the biggest Undertones fan. Teenage Kicks is his all-time favourite record. And one day I went into Radio 1 and I said, Oh, Peter, you better have this. And he was almost in tears. He was emotional at uh, being given uh, a badge from before they made it. Uh, he really was. So, yeah. Uh, but this is a great new single. They're back with a bang. You throw me. Yeah. Enjoy.
about the heritage chart because I think this is the most genius idea. It makes me very happy. I know you've also taken it to TV now. Uh, Chesney's yeah. been to visit you. The whole gang, actually, haven't they? The Fizz, the Mole. It's yeah. fantastic. So tell us more about it for people that haven't tuned in before. Well, a couple of years ago, uh, probably spring 2020, I was talking with Lemal and a few other people about uh, the songs. They said, well, you know, you're playing our new single, but nobody else is. Mm. And there were people with really good tracks out around the time. There's Paul Young, uh, Kim Wilde, Nick Kershaw, Howard Jones, Lemal, all sorts of people. And they said, well, what is the point of us making music if no one's going to play it? I know. So I thought, well, it really needs a proper shop window. So I came up with the idea of doing a heritage chart. And uh, we did, we kicked it off in July 2020. Mm -hmm. And it worked very, very well. Come the end of May, it's going to be the 100th show. I can't Woo! believe that. We need um, a party, Mike. And it's done very well. It goes out on about 24 stations, uh, different places around the world. And of late, we've been talking about doing it as a TV show. We did a, a transmittable pilot a few weeks ago that went out on 25 local stations here and in other stations and with a QR code in 250 newspapers. And it did so well, we said, right, we'll do a series. We haven't got a sponsor yet, but mm -hmm. we will get one. Yeah. Um, so we're making it anyway, and uh, we've just started shooting. And it's been, it's been great because, you know, it is a shop window like the radio for those artists that wouldn't normally get TV. I mm -hmm. mean, there's no, it, it's a sort of heritage top of the pops, really, because... Yeah. Um, but they're new songs, and people often make the mistake and they say, oh, you know, he's playing old songs. I said, no, they're not. They're new songs by people that are still making terrific music, but people aren't aware of the fact. I said, mm. so uh, doing it on TV as well is good, because normally, I mean, with no Top of the Pops and things like that, to get on a TV show with your song, it's going to be it's one of the big yeah. chat shows. They'll have Rod Stewart, they'll have Elton, they'll have Tina Turner if she wanted to go on, they'll have Dinah Ross, but they're not going to have other artists they're going to go for the really major superstars uh so this means that people can you know have a, a shop window on tv as well love that and for people that don't know how can you vote and how does the voting work there's a website heritagechart.co.uk uh, heritagechart.co.uk you go on there um <clears throat> you can click on all well it's, it's the top 40 uh, and you can, you can go on there and click whatever you want, and then it goes beyond the 40, so some of the new things coming out. So sometimes, we, we do on air a top 30, but sometimes it goes down to 40 or 45, or sometimes 50 over Christmas. Um, so you can vote, so they can climb up. Um, you can only vote for each song once during the week. You can vote right. for all the songs if you want, but you can only vote for them once. So it stops everyone going click, 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 yeah. click, click. Uh, so yeah. Love it. Well, we're going to put details on the screen uh, of how you can vote. Check it out. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, we're going to go into Lee John's song now. It's in the Heritage chart. Yeah. Love Lee John, and I love his cat as well. Yeah, Lee, Lee's great. I mean, I have to say, just on the voting, every week we get between 70 and 80 countries. I can go in and see who's voted. We get between 70 and 80 countries voting around the world. And I'm sometimes looking, thinking... Who's voting in Honolulu? Who's voting in Mauritius? Uh, but they are. Uh, yeah, Lee sung a great version of the old stylistics hit, Betcha by Golly Well, uh, originally done under a different title by Connie Stevens, little known that, about 1970. Uh, but yeah, Lee's done a wonderful job. His voice has got that mm. sort of Aaron Neville vibrato to it. Wonderful control. Yeah, we love it here on the show. Check this out, uh, and we'll see you There's after this. There's a spark of magic in your eyes Candyland appears each time you smile Never thought that fairy tales come true But they come true When I'm near you You're a genie Falling star. 
let you by God in love. You're the one that I've been waiting for forevermore and evermore. Never will my love for you keep growing strong. Keep growing strong. Growing strong. Growing strong. You are the busiest person in the morning that I know. You're on, let me just get this straight, Downforce Radio 365 and Epic in Canada. Uh, you've got multiple things going out at the same time. How does this work? Uh, it works easily. <laughs> I get up, I have a cup of tea. Nice. I go on, I do various things. I do a silly uh, Alan Freeman fluff top 10 every morning. There's some ghastly puns that everyone then joins in. Uh, we do bits and pieces like we used to do on the Ready One Roadshow. Uh, where people have to get the theme and the and the songs, uh, everyone enjoys that. And then, as radio laureate, I write an instant poem every morning. Some mornings, if I haven't got one, people just give me words, and I find a subject. And within an hour or an hour and twenty, I write a poem that includes all those words. So, uh, I recently met Simon Armitage, who's the uh, the poet laureate. And I said, it's fine for you, mate. You can write a poem every six weeks. I've got to write one every morning. Mike, I don't get it. I can just about get myself out of bed. And there you are, writing poems. It's all going on. I'm impressed. Yeah. And then we, we have... Um, a, a, people used to put up pictures and say, oh, come on, do an impression of whoever it was. <laughs> They'd always put up, you know, Rodney Buse, and like it. So I'd have to do a Rodney and do that sort of hangdog expression like that and talk about Terry, because you've got to think yourself as the person, you know. And then... You I know, missed you, Mike. And then they put up a picture of Mick Jagger, because Mick's voice hasn't broken, you know what I mean? <laughs> and he's always chatting, and Keith's there, you know, he's normally nodded off because he's taken something, you know. <laughs> um, and uh, annoyed Charlie. Charlie comes in as well. Prince Charles. You know, <laughs> normally talking about something rather than he's talking about the ordinary people that he waves at. Hello, ordinary people. You know, Hello, Charlie, they say to me. Hello, ordinary people, I say. You know, so I sort of do one of those every morning. You know, Love and that. sometimes through Pollard creeps in as well. <laughs> oh my so... goodness me, when through creeps in. Oh That's so um, good. So yeah, well, and then Sue. you know, occasionally Bob Gelder, because you've got to be careful with Gelder. You know, get to run your fingers through your hair like that, but be careful not to swear. <laughs> so it's a real struggle not to do that. Uh, you know. So yeah. Uh, so I do. I do all these silly voices. You know. I don't even know where we can go from here because you're t totally entertaining us here on the show. But we're going to go in to tight fit. Great. For, it's a great. It's a great tune, isn't it? I heard this and I was like, Fallout should be Eurovision. Yeah, it really is a great Eurovision song. Um, it's a great production by Matt Pop. Um, uh, very, very good. Yeah, we had them on the on the TV show, on the pilot, uh, and they were great. Well, you got them a nice green screen, got something going behind them, uh, and they were terrific. It really is a very, very strong song. And the new one as well, apparently, is equally good. Uh, and there's an album on the way yet. too. Yeah. Oh, right, OK. Well, yeah. here it is. Uh, type it. Fallout, my favourite. Enjoy. <laughs>
go into Betty Boo. Oh, I used to love her. Yeah. Like in her new song. Uh, again, you know, it's a shop window for people who is going to play Betty Boo. It's been a long gap between her 90s hits and what have you. Mm. I mean, she still looks good. Uh, mm. Still made a great record. But some of these people have. They've been, been a long, long time. Uh, one of our number ones was Mickey Dolenz from uh, The Monkees, who did Mike Nesmith's Different Drum. That was the number one. And then uh, Patsy Gallard, who had one hit way back, New York to L.A., came back with a great new single, Around the World. Uh, Tiffany came back with a really good new single as well. So it's fantastic. I mean, uh, out of the blue, years later, but the main radio stations, they go, oh, really? Oh, it's been like 10, 12, 15, 20 years. So they probably wouldn't play it. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah it's good that they've, you know, Mickey Dillon's came through this week and said, oh, I've got a new EP. Uh, and I said, oh, great, that's fantastic. So the right thing is the artists are liaising with you. Mm -hmm. uh, and some, you know, lovely Eddie Grant, I said, you haven't had any singles from your album. And he said, oh, no, what, what should I put out? And, and I said, well, you decide. He said, I don't know, and you've known me long enough, you decide. So, <laughs> so I did, and it's nice when the artists trust you that yes, much. Yes, yeah. love that. Well, make sure you check out uh, the Heritage Chart. Again, we're going to put details on the screen, because you need to vote, you need to get involved, uh, because it's a whole new world, it's just wonderful. And Mike, this has been lovely, because I haven't seen you for a couple of years. We've ate warm croissants, cups of tea, put the world to right, heard your impressions, heard your accents. What more could we ask for here on the show? Well, I think the answer is that we've done it so well, so quickly, so speedily and so professionally, thanks to you, that the croissants are still warm. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. It is the one and only Mike Weed. I can't wait to get with you.
Thank you, Mike Reed. Uh, what a show it has been. And thank you to you at home for supporting the show. It's so appreciated. Thank you. Now, I will see you same time, same place next week. I'm going to leave you with Saturday Night Song of the Week. Hi, I'm Zamba from Moodoo Ramble. Thank you, Haley, for having me on the show. Here's our latest single, London Town, an homage to the great city that I'm looking forward to returning to and playing soon. Lyrics are written by well-known Mr. Pete Feenstra. It is out now on Thoroughbred Music from Woody Ramble's new album coming soon. Enjoy! Never look